Hello everyone, welcome back to unit three. Um, and we're finally gonna start to get into all those camera settings. Um, so we are gonna talk about exposure. We're gonna talk about um, the histogram so you know how to read that a little bit. And then we're going to get into our specific settings that are in our camera. Um, I will say that I know some of you are using a phone that maybe doesn't have just built-in ability to change your settings. Um, if that is the case, maybe now is a good time to explore different apps that will allow you to uh, change settings on your phone. Um, if you're using an iPhone, maybe you can look at Halliday or Camera Pro. Um, I'm not sure about on Android. I do believe that a lot of Android cameras have it built into just the basic camera. So just do a little research, see what you can find if that is you. Um, if you are using film, we are going to talk about ISO and ISO um, is different on film and on the digital cameras. So keep that in mind. Uh, we do touch upon it just very briefly, um, but that's it. So if you're just coming here ready to get started, you'll be good to go. Um, so let's start with exposure. Uh, exposure is the most important part here because the camera is all about light and the light that is coming in. So we're gonna try to make this very manageable and make this very easy for you to kind of get some basic understanding of it. Please keep in mind um, that this class is a beginner's class. This class is exists specifically just to give you enough tools to start making the right choices and getting the pictures that you want. This is a huge topic that can get incredibly technical, lots of math, lots of science, lots of physics. Um, you don't need to know all that stuff in order to take the pictures that you want to take. If you are one of those people that is interested in that side of it, that's great. Um, we're not gonna get too deep into this, so please keep that in mind. Uh, if you are going through the class and you have a more advanced knowledge of this information, um, by all means, you know, feel free to share it in the Discord and everything, but keep in mind that not everybody um, has the desire or need or capacity to kind of get a full full broad strokes of this. Um, so we are going to just kind of keep this quite practical. Everything about this class is supposed to be practical so that you can just get making pictures, which is what I think most people want to do. So what is exposure? Um, exposure is the amount of light that reaches your camera's sensor and then how the sensor or the film processes it to make an image. Keep in mind that there is already ambient light around you at all times and that does come into play. So not just changing our settings, but we're changing our settings due to the light that is around us and any light that we are going to be introducing into the image, whether we're using flash or something different. Now there is no single right exposure for a scene. Um, a lot of the creativity in photos comes from the choices you make in regards to exposure. You will hear terms like overexposed and underexposed. Now, sometimes you want a picture to be overexposed. Sometimes you want it to be underexposed. Um, if you are taking pretty standard pictures or even like you know, pictures of birds and things like that, you probably want to get a solid flat exposure. So good highlights, good shadows, um, where you can see the subject nice and clearly. But just keep in mind that you have creative um, input on this and, and making these choices now is really going to uh, help you to kind of start to get an idea of how you can do some of these more advanced creative types of shots because of your exposure. Now, your camera measures your light um, with built-in light meters. If you look at your camera um, when you're looking into the viewfinder or at the back of the LCD screen, um, you will see a little bar, um, and that little bar has a bunch of numbers on it, minus, plus, and zero in the middle. Um, a properly exposed image there's gonna be a little dot and that little dot will be like right in the middle on the zero there. If you're a little bit overexposed, you'll move to the right where it's the plus. Um, now I'm thinking that I think on Nikon and Canon they're opposite, so look for the plus or the minus, not left or right uh, necessarily. 
Um, and then if it's underexposed, it will be towards the minus side. Your camera allows you to choose your settings um, in order to get that exposure. So you have auto mode. Auto mode is when your camera will choose everything for you. It's gonna choose your aperture, it's gonna choose your shutter speed, it's going to choose your ISO, um, and it's going to aim to get a perfectly exposed on that zero uh, image. So if you don't want that perfectly exposed image, a good way of doing that is to be using one of the, the semi-automatic or manual modes. Uh, the semi-automatic modes would be like aperture priority or shutter priority. They have other names and different brands. Um, but basically, if you're an aperture priority, that means you're choosing the aperture and then the camera is going to make the decisions on your shutter speed and your ISO. You can also set up like a um, maximum ISO. So if you're afraid that the camera is going to go higher than you're comfortable with, we know that higher ISOs can introduce noise, so you can set like a, a top one. If you're not sure how to do that, please look in your manual um, or Google it and you'll get manual uh, information there as well. Now your manual mode, not to be confused with your camera's manual, uh, your manual mode means that you're choosing everything. You're choosing your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. And that means that you have full control. So you can go ahead and make it a completely black image if you want and a completely white image if you want. Um, and then obviously everything in between. So what are these settings that I'm talking about? A lot of you are already aware of them, um, but briefly, aperture. Aperture is what uh, is that hole in your lens we talked about in the lens uh, lesson. And it can get bigger and smaller depending on what you're trying to do. To let more light in, you would make a bigger aperture, which um, if you remember uh, is a smaller number because it's a fraction, right? So a bigger number lets more light in, a bigger aperture. Your shutter speed is how fast, the uh, how much time is allowed into the camera, into your sensor. It's like a little blind that goes really fast or really slow. Um, so obviously a slower shutter speed takes longer for that shutter to go by the sensor or the film, which means more light is coming in. Um, this also will affect things like motion blur and actually freezing motion. So we'll talk about that more. And then your ISO. Um, ISO is, is quite complicated. Um, there's a very good lesson in this unit that explains it um, in all the technical terms in a way that I think you guys will all understand. So I'm not going to try to um, explain that quite right now just because I do think that the the ISO lesson was written very deliberately and very correctly and I don't want to say something slightly different that might cause some confusion there because ISO, there's a lot of misconceptions about what ISO actually is and how it actually functions. Um, so please just look forward to the lesson there um, and read through that. Um, practically, the idea with ISO is if you um, need a smaller aperture and you need a faster shutter speed and all, it's too dark or it's late at night and it's too dark and you've tried opening your aperture and you've tried slowing down your shutter speed as much as you can and it's still too dark, you can bring up that ISO, um, which will amplify the light that is present um, and give you some more exposure to work with. Again, please just go through that ISO lesson for the better verbiage um, than I am able to say right now. So that is what we're going to do first. So we're talking about the exposure. So please read through the lesson below. Um, you're also going to see some online practices, um, well, some practical practices that I want you to just try right now. And then um, there's also an online tool that I'm a big fan of called Canon Outside of Auto, uh, which allows you to play with um, a shutter speed with a scene with lots of motion. So you can play with the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. This is a great way to just kind of see it in real time. Um, obviously going out and doing it with your own camera is preferable, but this is a great, another way to just kind of see it happening in front of your eyes. So go ahead, read through the exposure lesson and I will see you guys in histogram, which is next.
Thank you.